Today, we're actually going to make another skincare product, an herbal skincare product. This is going to be a chocolate lip balm recipe. This is a recipe where I created this a long time ago, but I'm going to double it. Now, I want to just mention here, because as you can see, I don't have a scale. It's really best with your skincare formulations and actually other formulations too, to start getting used to using a scale, especially if you're going to sell your products. If you're not selling your products and you're just making stuff for yourself, <laughs> then the way I'm doing it is absolutely fine. And it's pretty easy for everybody because we have most of the tools, right? in our kitchens. We're going to be using the double boiler method because we have to melt down the oils and the beeswax together and then add our colorants and things and then pour them into the lip balm tray here. So let me talk about what we've got going on. First off, the ingredients. We're going to be using coconut oil and this is unrefined extra virgin and I've got organic beeswax pellets here. By the way, this is organic too. Whenever I can, I prefer organic. It's not always possible to get it, but I really like it a lot better. Organic cocoa butter. And these comes in little, little pellets. Never mind, they come in chunks. <laughs> I have one brand that comes in these neat little pastille pellets and this is a chunky one. I've got some cocoa powder. This is optional. It will turn your chocolate lip balm brown, but brown is a good color for lips and actually it doesn't really color your lips all that much anyway. You could actually also grind up some rose petals and put that in there instead and do a chocolate rose lip balm with this recipe. There's a whole bunch of things you could do with this. And then I've got some chocolate truffle essential oil, which is a blend. It's a blend of different essential oils that make it smell like chocolate. It's so good. And I got this from Plant Therapy. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a certain amount in here. We'll be talking about dilutions and safety and everything when we get to that part. Tool-wise, I've got a pan in the kitchen in there uh, going with some water. That's going to be my little double boiler. I've got a glass stir rod, which you can see here. I have a beaker, and I, I, I wanted to use the beaker for this because I'm only going to make 12 lip balms, and this is going to allow me to pour carefully pretty easily. Now, this is a lip balm tray, okay? There are 50 spots here for lip balms, and all you have to do is take your little lip balm uh, container, your little tube, and I like to make sure that it's turned all the way down so that there's enough room so that it fills completely, basically. So then you just pop it into the little hole back here. And these serve as the legs <laughs> as well as gives us some stability. So what I do if I'm not using a, or if I'm not making a whole bunch of lip balms, I'll just fill the corners like I did here. I'm going to get 12. So there you go. This is my little scraper and this makes sure that you've got a nice smooth top. Here's a little tip too. One of the things I learned a long time ago when I had a product shop was that you could use some tape and just tape up the holes on top. So I do have some little tape residue here if you're looking at this very closely, but it's clean. This is a washed tray and is very good. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to be using a teaspoon measurement today. I've got my beeswax, so I'm going to take my beeswax and I'm going to go ahead and put it into my little beaker because this is what's going to go in the double boiler today. I'm going to take two teaspoons. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doubling this. I'm going to do four teaspoons of my beeswax. And here's the problem with, not really a problem, it's just what it is, but when you're not weighing things, you are being very approximate. And when you're doing a small recipe like this is, as you can see, there's not much here, then the possibility for making a mistake is greater. But I'm willing to risk that because 
I don't really feel like weighing these out. <laughs> but eventually, I need to actually go through all my skincare formulations that I have and other things and put weights to them. I've been meaning to do that forever, but I just haven't. And eventually, I will. Okay, next up is our coconut oil. And I am going to put in one tablespoon of coconut oil. And one tablespoon of coconut oil is the same as three teaspoons. So I'm just gonna scoop in three teaspoons. That was a bit heavy, I think. Try to go a little lighter on the next one. Ah, coconut oil smells so good. One thing to know about coconut oil, and this just goes along with the fact that all of our bodies are different, is some people are allergic to it on their skin. I happen to be one of those people as I rub it into my hands. <laughs> my hands aren't gonna matter because I wash them quite often, but I was making a coconut oil skincare cream many years ago and I couldn't figure out why my skin was drying out and felt so itchy. It was just, oh my gosh, it was driving me crazy. I was in my classroom. I was teaching uh, elementary school at the time and I was just like scratching my legs and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and uh, I realized uh, that it was the coconut oil once I started uh, changing up my ingredients a little bit. So that was a little shocking. Okay, here we've got uh, two teaspoons of the unrefined cocoa butter. This is definitely unrefined. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm just going to take little chunks off of this little guy here. And so again, we're not being super exact which I know a lot of the skincare formulators would cringe. <laughs> Luckily, I'm an herbalist. <laughs> I actually do have a skincare certification. But again, when you're making this stuff for yourself and you know enough about how much to put in and all of that good stuff, it's good. To, you're good to go. All right, there we go. Approximately two teaspoons of cocoa butter. Cocoa butter, to me, it just smells... It smells like chocolate <laughs> because it's from the cocoa bean. It's really wonderful and it's so good for your skin. Just melts right in there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take my little beaker here and I'm going to go put it onto the double boiler and let this gently uh, melt down. And I will show you that in a uh, video in just a second. All right, so here we have a makeshift double boiler system, and you can see how this works. It's super easy. You've got a saucepan, and I've got the oh, probably about an inch and a half of water, and I could have more than that if I want. And I have got my little beaker with my oils inside. Now all that condensation is on the outside of the beaker, and one thing I do like about beakers is they've got this lip that folds over, so there's really no chance of any moisture ending up inside your beaker, which is nice. And then another thing other people like to do is use a Pyrex, a little pitcher, and then you can just loop the handle right over the side of the saucepan because it's heat resistant. So that's another option. Obviously, I have to pull this off with my fingers when it's melted and done, and that's not always nice. <laughs> but if you have a, an oven mitt or a glove or something, it's just fine. You can see the butters have already melted and now we're left with the beeswax, which is always the last thing to go. <laughs> so stirring does help. So I'm just going to keep stirring here and when it's completely liquefied, one quick thing you might be wondering about is, I, is the cloth at the bottom. I didn't explain that, did I? So I've got a little cloth at the bottom of the pan, and that's what this little beaker is sitting on. And what that does is it keeps the beaker from rattling around as the water uh, simmers. You can see the simmering going on in the water, and this be the beakers are the thin glass. I definitely don't want them rattling around, and it looks like we're about done here. All right, here we are, we're back. I've got my little beaker with a cloth over it, actually, and my glass stir rod. Everything's liquefied, it looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is add a teeny tiny bit of cocoa powder. 
Uh, I'm going to add only about a quarter of a teaspoon, if that. I think I'm actually going to add less, like just a tiny amount, even maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Just going to make it a little, just a little bit there. Drop it in. The, the thing about adding color to your lip balms and things is that there's an association psychologically between appearance and scent and taste. In fact, our taste doesn't really work very well if our olfactory bulb is not working. <laughs> There's a definite connection there. As any of you who uh, lost your smelling ability during the uh, days of COVID are aware of, uh, it's just, it makes your taste it, it not work too well. So I'm gonna get that cocoa powder stirred up in there. And this is the color it is, not pretty. Just a pretty light brown. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add six drops of the essential oil blend. This is also going to contribute to a little bit of brown color as well. And I guess I can read you the ingredients of this. So here are the ingredients. We've got vanilla planifolia fruit extract, and it's in a sugar cane ethanol. So that means there's some alcohol in it. We also have vanilla planifolia just by itself. So that's going to contribute to some brown color. And then we've got theobroma cacao uh, seed extract as well. So this is really a nice little blend. And I can tell you right now, it smells amazing. So if you want to play around with chocolate scented skincare, I really recommend that blend. It's nice. All right. I am going to go ahead and stop stirring this now. And I'm going to just carefully pour this into my little lip balm tubes, right up to the top. I didn't quite get enough to fill my tubes, no worries. That this is going to give me seven tubes, okay? So that's not a problem. I'm actually happier with that because I don't not really a lip gloss girl. Sometimes I am. It's good for chapstick and things like that. I'm just making this for fun today. And also because a friend of me of mine asked me to make some. Now, if you want, you can take your scraper and just scrape off the top if you have any that are uh, bulging or overflowing at all, which I don't. So let me go ahead and get the camera on this so you can see what this looks like here. All right, so there's an aerial view. And ideally, when you're making uh, lip balms, see how this is concave right here? You'd want to, after it, it starts hardening, which it is right now, you'd want to give it another little fill, only I don't have any more. And again, I'm just making this for fun and for our friends. I would suggest uh, playing around with your recipes and your amounts, and you'll get to know when, how many teaspoons of something you're going to need to make a certain number of lip balms. And here we go. So here's another little trick for you. So it's been a couple of minutes, and this, these are not completely set up yet, but uh, one thing you can do after they've been working for a couple minutes is just take your little, if you end up with an issue like this where you've got some sunken uh, lip balm tubes, is you can just gently turn the base until you get a little bit above the base and then use your scraper and just slice off the top and now you've got a, a smooth top which is nice so you can do that with all of these if you want to or just leave them like they are either way it works just fine and it depends on how important pretty is to you <laughs> all right okay pretty or functional that's a that's always a great choice to have. So now I've got some really beautiful flat tops on here. This one over here is a little messed up. That's not a problem either. Okay. And now I've got seven gorgeous flat topped uh, lip balm tubes. So that's one of the ways you can handle if you get a, a problem like that, which is not really a problem. <laughs> problem is something worse. But anyway, I'm just going to let this, these continue setting up. And once they're set up, I will come back. While we're waiting for these to set up, let me just share with you a couple of free gifts I have for you. So if you're interested in working with herbs and essential oils, I have a really great book 
This is my free 24-page guide to how to relax using herbs and oils. There's recipes and remedies in here. There's information about uh, anxiety and de-stressing. So it's a nice little guide that will help you get started with some really great recipes right away. Another one I have for you, and this is for a limited time only because this is actually going to end up in a course of <laughs> mine in the school at some point. But this is my uh, book on herbs and oils for love. It's 53 pages. And for, again, a very limited time, you can get it um, in the link below. And you've got some wonderful recipes in here from chocolate strawberry face mask to a honey love hand and body scrub to elixirs and uh, aphrodisiac lover's tea, all kinds of just fun things, really fun things in here, plus information on 10 herbs that tend to have some aphrodisiac qualities and materia medica that goes along with them, plus essential oils and data sheets that go along with those essential oils too. And then of course, there's my herbal remedy guide that I'm always offering. So a lot of free fun things you can grab and start learning herbalism and get your herbal journey going. All right. So so let's go ahead and just talk about this really fast. So the way you want to do this is when they're all set up, you just release them from the tube gently. And here you've got your lip balm. And then you can take your cap, put your cap on, and you want to put a label on this so you know what it is. So that's where these little guys come in. You can buy them on Amazon. They look like this. And they make it really easy to label things. And you can, if you want to get fancy, you can do it on the computer or you can just do what I do <laughs> and handwrite the, the labels out. One thing I want to say about flavoring, a lot of people want that sweet taste or like the little flavor. And especially it seems like teenage girls, <laughs> they, they want the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but this doesn't have any taste. It just has scent, which is nice, I feel. Just be aware, if you're going to put flavoring in your lip balms, and you certainly can, that you don't want them to be synthetic or unnatural. You definitely want to go with a natural flavoring or a choose some kind of an herb or a spice, like cinnamon or something that has a flavor. Uh, in fact, we could have put some cinnamon powder in here, or we could have put a number of different herbs in here that might have given it a little flavor. Some lip balms, you can do some experimenting. You can add honey. Honey will add a little sweetness. So along with the scent of the chocolate, you've got that sweet taste. And that often tricks a person too into thinking they've got flavor. All right. So there we go. I'm going to try this out. Mm. <laughs> it is really nice. This is a very good recipe. All right. I hope you enjoyed this quick little recipe for chocolate lip balm. And there we go. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to get your guide. Be sure to subscribe. If you have other recipes you want me to share with you, please put them in the comments below. In the last video that I did on beet kvass, I uh, ended up having people say, please, so let's do some more fermentation. And I love fermentation. I, since I got, had so much feedback on that, I will be doing some more fermentation recipes. But if there's something you want to see, especially if it's herbal, any kind of traditional living that I do, I'm willing to share with you. We are homesteaders. We live up on the hill and farm and garden and have chickens and the whole ball of wax. So I'm happy to share any of that with you. In the meantime, this is basically an herbalism and aromatherapy channel. All right, I'm Heidi Villegas. HealingHarvestHomestead.com is my website. And of course, this YouTube channel has become my baby. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the next video.